Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is Hug Nation. Today, I want to talk about the wisdom of trauma. Now, the wisdom of trauma is a title of a new film by Gabor Mate, or about Gabor Mate, which is fantastic, and I urge you to watch it. But I recognize that there might be people out there that won't watch it, or might think what I used to think, which is, this doesn't apply to me. So today I want to talk a little bit about my shifting understanding of trauma. A year ago, I did not believe that trauma applied to me. I believed I had a trauma-free life. I grew up with all sorts of privilege. I did not have to endure any sort of physical abuse or mental abuse. I had no traumatic events that I could think of that put me in the category of one who was influenced by trauma. And after working with a coach for a number of months, they suggested that I look into certain aspects of trauma and trauma patterns and attachment theory that's influenced by trauma and addictive patterns that are influenced by trauma and introduced me to Gabor Mate as well as um, attachment theory and a, and a series of, of readings and ideas. And this was a huge thing for me to entertain the thought of having that. Because in my mind, I associated trauma with brokenness. And I want to share this with you now in case you're in that category because I realized that that wall, that inability for me to see myself as a, I don't want to use a victim because as one who is influenced by trauma, that inability to see that put me in a, a mental prison of sort, unable to see the aspects of my own behavior that I was not in control of. I was lucky enough to discover aspects of self-growth fairly early in my life. I graduated as, with a degree in psychology. I worked as a counselor. I participated in therapy throughout aspects of my youth. And so as I was learning about personal growth and philosophy in my late 20s and 30s, I got to a point where I felt like I was pretty solid. I was often one who was helping others and sharing, such as in broadcasts like this. So I did not see myself as one who was traumatized. And that had a number of effects. One was that when I did have triggering moments, it was very difficult for me to, to forgive myself. And so I would spiral into these places of self-judgment and, and real anger towards myself, like how, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, I should have this figured out by now. And so this shift in understanding of trauma, that trauma is more than just a massive event that you are damaged by, although it certainly can be that, you can be traumatized by all sorts of, of patterns in your youth, all sorts of, it can be a very simple thing that a young mind doesn't receive what it needs. And so it develops a response or a story that then becomes part of the behaviors and patterns for the rest of their life. And until you, until I opened up my mind to that possibility, I was unable to see those patterns as they were happening to me. I thought I was much more in control than I was. So this idea of a trauma-influenced life being not in this category of broken, but being in the category of normal, I think is so insignificant. We are all dealing with aspects of trauma. So let me tell you this right now. If you are having a mindset like I used to and thinking, well, that doesn't apply to me, I urge you to be open to the fact that perhaps it is. And Acknowledging that is not an admission of weakness or guilt or brokenness. It is a recognition of your humanity, and it is an opening a door to your 
possibility of liberation. I used to think, as this person who is fairly evolved and fairly in touch with personal growth and, and who I was, that I was in a pretty balanced, good state, and therefore my job was to be patient with those around me who were dealing with their issues. And as I studied trauma and studied trauma responses and attachment theory and realized how certain descriptions of, say, avoidant attachment labeled me so clearly that I became more the, oh, just as I am being patient with the trauma responses of those around me, those around me are being patient with mine. And that's a, initially it was a big ego blow until over the last seven months or so, I've started to have more and more examples of times when that shift in perspective has allowed me to learn and allowed me to have separation between a behavior and a response. Or a big one is when I used to be triggered, it was followed by anger, guilt, judgment of myself. Now, if I'm triggered, I can go, oh, I'm having a very natural experience, as all humans do. Now, what is the source of that? And through that, that forgiveness, the focus of my energy is not on negativity and judgment of myself, but it's on exploration. And through that, trying to figure out what childhood experience or what long-time pattern, what insecurity, what uh, defense mechanism that has worked for me, to protect me is no longer serving me. And I think it's important to, to speak to the idea that, that this process of examining trauma is not a process of finding blame and discovering who's at fault for damaging you or hurting you or creating this. It's, it's merely a process of understanding. And through the understanding of the circumstances, understanding how you responded and how you can fix it, or how you can you know, alleviate or free yourself from, from those things. So I, many of the things that I'm becoming aware of have to do with my experiences and patterns with my parents, as that is often the case. But I also recognize that they did the best they could. Often things that, for all that they were aware of and everything they learned, they were doing the, the, the best possible thing, and yet it did have an effect on me. And a good example is, and this is not particularly to me, but something that I just heard spoken about by Gabor Mate in his film, is you know, we have a, uh, a child parenting teaching of like letting a kid cry out. If, you know, if they are in their bed and they're crying, we train or we tell parents or we used to train parents that you know, let the kid cry it out. Train them that you know, they don't reinforce the crying. However, that creates a traumatic response in a child. We now have a bunch more research and details on, on how a biolog biological reaction and uh, uh, responses of a child is, can cause a damage and then can cause a, a expectation or a pattern or a, a realization that they are on their own and they cannot depend on people, things like that. And so then they develop certain beliefs or worldviews in this teeny tiny baby that then becomes the way that the world is from then on. And, and then patterns and behaviors start to become reactions within that context. Now, the parent is just reading a parenting book and doing what they're told. There was no evil behind this, no neglect. It just is something that happens. And and, and people are being people. People are dealing with their own stuff. They're being triggered. They're being frustrated. They're having a tough day at work and or being preoccupied. And so a child then has responses of not getting the attention they need or not being heard or having something difficult happen to them. And a parent not having the tools to communicate. And so the child is there with this traumatic experience or, or thoughts or awareness or fears without a system for which to communicate and talk through and be soothed. And so that then 
becomes a part of that a traumatic thing that influences behaviors. Okay, so this is the reason why this is, is so important and significant is because for me, I have I continue to to find myself having reactions that when I can give myself permission to not spiral and look at it, I can go, oh, I, I, I understand what I'm afraid of. And one of the common ones for me is, is being judged or disapproval, being seen as stupid or unworthy. And so I will do something and it won't go right. And without me knowing it, subconsciously, I think that there is this fictional entity, being, voice that is going to attack me and make me feel bad. And so I freak out in anticipation of this thing that never actually happens. But I freak out. And I've done this for years, and I only very recently in the last few months have started to see it and go, oh my gosh, I just, you know, I just got lost and I'm going to be late for this uh, appointment with a friend. I freak out because in my mind, somewhere beneath the surface, I think that that person is going to have this judgment and anger towards me. And so I panic and freak out. But if I can slow down and go, what is happening? Why am I so freaked out? Then I can go, wait, no one is going to judge me. There's nobody, there is no monster out there that has these attitudes towards me. The same thing happened last week where, well, not the same thing, but the same pattern. I was trying to get the Hugmobile ready for a trip that my partner Becca was going to go on. And I saw that it was low in oil. So uh, as she was there and we're getting it set up for her, I decided to add a quart of oil, realized um, after it was glug, 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 glug. She said, that doesn't look like oil. Oh, shit. It's transmission fluid. Now, I lost it. I started, started screaming. I banged my hand on the side of the Hugmobile. She was... Becca was like, hey, you know, it's okay. Look, it says this, and maybe it's not a big deal. And, and I was just like, please, just stop, stop. I just like, I was like in the red, freaking. And what is interesting for me to look at now is the Hookmobile breaks down all the time. In the last few months, I've been driving on the side of the road, going up a hill, and it died, and I had to pull over in the middle of traffic. And my reaction was not fine. It was, huh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what to do here. But I did not have that reaction. So I was like, what is the difference? What happened in this moment? And I was able to go to that questioning place within 10 minutes. And I realized that I was preparing the Hugmobile for Becca. And so as I realized that I fucked up, I now, this, now Becca had the potential in my subconscious mind to react in this place of like, you fucked up, you ruined this for me, you're fucking so stupid, you know, this like, and again, no one in my life has ever spoke to me that way, but I have feared that, and, and it's like kind of an, a, a, the worst of every authority figure, every coach, every teacher, every parental disciplining, and so I freaked out knowing that I just put myself in a situation that was probably is going to get that. Now, none of that was happening mentally. I just freaked out. So when I broke it down and could see what was happening, I was like, oh, no one is reacting this way. No one is making me feel unworthy. I'm just falling into this pattern without really thinking about what's happening. I'm, I'm not actually responding from an authentic place here. I am falling into this pattern behavior based on old traumatic um, you know patterns that I have and so I was like I was able to very quickly 
forgive myself, let go. Now, now that I forgive myself, now I have to say, okay, I was just very, um, I just, I just behaved in a very unfair, un, uh, violent, outwardly way in front of someone that I care about. So I reached out to her and said, you know, I'm so sorry. And thank you for being so calm. And thank you for helping me to get to a place of problem solving. And, and she responded, hey, that's what partnerships are. And this process of going through trauma and learning and the process of realizing how often my trauma responses affect my relationships or how my avoidant attachment tendencies affect my ability to, to make commitments. When she said that, I was like, whoa. I've heard people say a partnership, you know, you get to share the burden, but that's never the way I felt. I've always felt that a partnership doubles the burden. That's one of my fears of commitment is like, it's more people I'm responsible for. It's more opportunities for me to get into that situation where I feel the monster is telling me that I'm unworthy. But in this situation, she was right. She was able to be strong when I was weak. And it was just like, whoa, this is the potential of like working with your trauma is the possibility to grow like this, to have your relationships get to a place of depth and trust and mutual true partnership. I was like, wow, this is so awesome. She also encouraged me to reach out to a friend, our friend Christopher Robin, and ask for help which was so hard for me for the same reason. I have difficulty asking for help because it's another person that I could disappoint or burden. But I was in a place of trusting her and I reached out and Christopher Robin said, hey, um, I, will, I can change the oil for you, which as we looked online and as he advised us as a mechanically inclined person, like that's all that we really need to do. True, she should not drive it on her trip, but we could fix the oil or change the oil. So we went over there, we did that, and all was well. And so within hours, I had, one, learned about myself, Two, grown in my relationship. Three, practiced aspects of vulnerability and partnership and, and seeking help that were uncomfortable for me. And, and got all this positive reinforcement that is helpful in breaking the old patterns. Not only that, but Christopher Robin, he just happened to be about to work on his motorcycle. So he was all dressed in his grungy clothes happy to do it and and honestly the kind of person that is so grateful to have the opportunity to be of service like that as someone who feels the same way and loves to be of service i don't know why i struggle so much with giving other people the opportunity to be of service to me well i'm not it's actually not so confusing especially after what i'm talking about today it is that fear of being a burden and that fear of being a burden is based on these old traumatic responses and these old patterns and these old fears of these childhood wound monsters that will lash at me and make me feel not good enough and unworthy. And so shaping or reshaping the worldview and, and having given yourself permission to see these patterns is the opposite of being broken. It's, it's the, the clarity to see your truth on the other side of what's in the way of it. And so it is so exciting to feel like liberated from these things. Not fully, you know, I'm not, I'm not without these patterns, but I can see the binds on me and I can feel the difference between 
reacting and thinking it's me and reacting and recognizing, oh, that was, I just fell into a pattern. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's actually a wonderful opportunity. That is the wisdom of trauma. It is this, this path of doing the work of allowing yourself to see these things so that you can be free, free with who you are. And as someone who used to think he was so free, it's kind of exciting to know that those old lashing outs that I used to have, those triggering moments when I go, I thought I was had all this figured out. Why the fuck am I still tripping and stumbling? Like, oh, I know why now. And now I know that the journey of evolution is one of always continuing down this path, continually forgiving myself and seeing the opportunity. So I hope you forgive yourself. I hope you are open to this journey of, of trauma analysis and, and personal observation and find hope in it. And, and recognizing that it is normal. Everyone, everyone, if they've had a human experience, which I'm pretty sure we all have, we have degrees of trauma. And so let's be forgiving of one another. Let's be especially forgiving of ourselves. And recognize that we're all walking each other home. Thank you. I love you.